Madrasa Arabic, Mdrst Madrasa, place. Mdars Madaris is the Arabic word for any type of educational institution, secular or religious of any religion, whether for elementary instruction or higher learning. The word is variously transliterated madrasa, medrisa, madrasa, madraza, medris, etc. In the West, the word usually refers to a specific type of religious school or college for the study of the Islamic religion, though this may not be the only subject studied. In countries like India, not all students in madrasas are Muslims, there is also a modern curriculum. Definition The word madrasa derives from the triconsonantal Semitic root drs drs to learn, study, through the wazn form, stem, mflt maf al a, meaning, a place where something is done. Therefore, madrasa literally means, a place where learning and studying take place. The word is also present as a loanword with the same innocuous meaning in many Arabic-influenced languages, such as, Urdu, Bengali, Pashto, Baluchi, Persian, Turkish, Azeri, Kurdish, Indonesian, Malay and Bosnian. In the Arabic language, the word mdrst madrasa simply means the same as school does in the English language, whether that is private, public or parochial school, as well as for any primary or secondary school whether Muslim, non-Muslim, or secular. Unlike the use of the word school in British English, the word madrasa more closely resembles the term school in American English, in that it can refer to a university level or postgraduate school as well as to a primary or secondary school. For example, in the Ottoman Empire during the early modern period, madaris had lower schools and specialized schools where the students became known as danismans. The usual Arabic word for a university, however, is jamt the Hebrew cognate midrasha also connotes the meaning of a place of learning. The related term midrash literally refers to study or learning, but has acquired mystical and religious connotations. However, in English, the term madrasa usually refers to the specifically Islamic institutions. A typical Islamic school usually offers two courses of study, a hivs course teaching memorization of the Quran the person who commits the entire Quran to memory is called a hafiz, and an alim course leading the candidate to become an accepted scholar in the community. A regular curriculum includes courses in Arabic, tafsir Quranic interpretation, shara Islamic law, hadiths recorded sayings and deeds of Muhammad, mantik logic, and Muslim history. In the Ottoman Empire, during the early modern period, the study of hadiths was introduced by Suleiman I. Depending on the educational demands, some madaris also offer additional advanced courses in Arabic literature, English, and other foreign languages, as well as science and world history. Ottoman madaris, along with religious teachings, also taught styles of writing, grammar, syntax, poetry, composition, natural sciences, political sciences, and etiquette. People of all ages attend, and many often move on to becoming imams. The certificate of an alim, for example, requires approximately 12 years of study. A good number of the hafiz plural of hafiz are the product of the madaris. The madaris also resemble colleges, where people take evening classes and reside in dormitories. An important function of the madaris is to admit orphans and poor children in order to provide them with education and training. Madaris may enroll female students, however, they study separately from the men. <inaudible> Islamic education The term, Islamic education, means education in the light of Islam itself, which is rooted in the teachings of the Quran, the holy book of the Muslims. Islamic education and Muslim education are not the same. Because Islamic education has epistemological integration which is founded on tawhid, oneness or monotheism. <laughs> Early history The first institute of madrasa education was at the estate of Zayd bin Arkham near a hill called Safa, where Muhammad was the teacher and the students were some of his followers. After Hijra migration, the madrasa of Safa was established in Medina on the east side of the Al Masjid and Nabawi Mosque. Ubada ibn as Samit was appointed there by Muhammad as teacher and among the students. 
In the curriculum of the madrasa, there were teachings of the Quran, the Hadith, Faris, Tajweed, genealogy, treatises of first aid, etc. There were also trainings of horse riding, art of war, handwriting and calligraphy, athletics and martial arts. The first part of madrasa-based education is estimated from the first day of Nabuwat to the first portion of the Umayyad Caliphate, established in 859, Jamie at al karawiyyan located in al karawiyyan Mosque in the city of Fez, Morocco, is considered the oldest university in the world by some scholars, though the existence of universities in the medieval Muslim world is debated. It was founded by Fatima al-Firi, the daughter of a wealthy merchant named Muhammad al-Firi. This was later followed by the establishment of Al Azhar in 959 in Cairo, Egypt. During the late Abbasid period, the Seljuk vizier Nizam al Mulk created one of the first major official academic institutions known in history as the Madrasa Nizamiya, based on the informal Mahalis sessions of the sheikhs. Nizam al Mulk, who would later be murdered by the assassins, Hashashin, created a system of state madaris in his time they were called the Nizamiyas, named after him in various Abbasid cities at the end of the 11th century. During the rule of the Fatimid and Mamluk dynasties and their successor states in the medieval Middle East, many of the ruling elite founded madaris through a religious endowment known as the Waqf. Not only was the madrasa a potent symbol of status but it was an effective means of transmitting wealth and status to their descendants. Especially during the Mamluk period, when only former slaves could assume power, the sons of the ruling Mamluk elite were unable to inherit. Guaranteed positions within the new madaris thus allowed them to maintain status. Madaris built in this period include the mosque madrasa of Sultan Hassan in Cairo. Dmitri Goudas and the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy consider the period between the 11th and 14th centuries to be the golden age of Arabic and Islamic philosophy, initiated by al Ghazali's successful integration of logic into the madrasa curriculum and the subsequent rise of Avicennism. At the beginning of the Caliphate or Islamic Empire, the reliance on courts initially confined sponsorship and scholarly activities to major centers. Within several centuries, the development of Muslim educational institutions such as the madrasa and masjid eventually introduced such activities to provincial towns and dispersed them across the Islamic legal schools and Sufi orders. In addition to religious subjects, they also taught the rational sciences, as varied as mathematics, astronomy, astrology, geography, alchemy, philosophy, magic, and occultism, depending on the curriculum of the specific institution in question. The madaris, however, were not centers of advanced scientific study. Scientific advances in Islam were usually carried out by scholars working under the patronage of royal courts. During the Islamic Golden Age, the caliphate experienced a growth in literacy, having the highest literacy rate of the Middle Ages, comparable to classical Athens literacy in antiquity but on a much larger scale. The emergence of the maktab and madrasa institutions played a fundamental role in the relatively high literacy rates of the medieval Islamic world. The following excerpt provides a brief synopsis of the historical origins and starting points for the teachings that took place in the Ottoman madaris in the early modern period. Taskopraluzade's concept of knowledge and his division of the sciences provides a starting point for a study of learning and medri's education in the Ottoman Empire. Taskopraluzade recognizes four stages of knowledge spiritual, intellectual, oral, and written. Thus, all the sciences fall into one of these seven categories calligraphic sciences, oral sciences, intellectual sciences, spiritual sciences, theoretical rational sciences, and practical rational sciences. The first Ottoman medris was created in Iznik in 1331, when a converted church building was assigned as a medris to a famous scholar, David of Kayseri. Suleiman made an important change in the hierarchy of Ottoman madrasas. He established four general madrasas and two more for specialized studies, one devoted to the hadith and the other to medicine. He gave the highest ranking to these and thus established the hierarchy of the madrasas which was to continue until the end of the empire. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Elementary education. In the medieval Islamic world, an elementary school was known as a maktab, which dates back to at least the 10th century. Like madaris, which referred to higher education, a maktab was often attached to an endowed mosque. 
In the 11th century, the famous Persian Islamic philosopher and teacher Ibn Sina known as Avicenna in the West, in one of his books, wrote a chapter about the Maktab entitled, The Role of the Teacher in the Training and Upbringing of Children, as a guide to teachers working at Maktab schools. He wrote that children can learn better if taught in classes instead of individual tuition from private tutors, and he gave a number of reasons for why this is the case, citing the value of competition and emulation among pupils, as well as the usefulness of group discussions and debates. Ibn Sina described the curriculum of a maktab school in some detail, describing the curricula for two stages of education in a maktab school. Primary education Ibn Sina wrote that children should be sent to a maktab school from the age of six and be taught primary education until they reach the age of fourteen. During which time, he wrote, they should be taught the Quran, Islamic metaphysics, Arabic, literature, Islamic ethics, and manual skills which could refer to a variety of practical skills. Secondary education Ibn Sina refers to the secondary education stage of maktab schooling as a period of specialization when pupils should begin to acquire manual skills, regardless of their social status. He writes that children after the age of 14 should be allowed to choose and specialize in subjects they have an interest in, whether it was reading, manual skills, literature, preaching, medicine, geometry, trade and commerce, craftsmanship, or any other subject or profession they would be interested in pursuing for a future career. He wrote that this was a transitional stage and that there needs to be flexibility regarding the age in which pupils graduate, as the student's emotional development and chosen subjects need to be taken into account. Higher education During its formative period, the term madrasa referred to a higher education institution, whose curriculum initially included only the religious sciences, whilst philosophy and the secular sciences were often excluded. The curriculum slowly began to diversify, with many later madras teaching both the religious and the secular sciences, such as logic, mathematics and philosophy. Some Madaris further extended their curriculum to history, politics, ethics, music, metaphysics, medicine, astronomy and chemistry. The curriculum of a madrasa was usually set by its founder, but most generally taught both the religious sciences and the physical sciences. Madaris were established throughout the Islamic world, examples being the 9th century University of al Qarawiyyan, the 10th century Al Azhar University, the most famous, the 11th century Nizamiyya, as well as 75 Madaris in Cairo, 51 in Damascus, and up to 44 in Aleppo between 1155 and 1260. Many more were also established in the Andalusian cities of Córdoba, Seville, Toledo, Granada Madrasa of Granada, Murcia, Almería, Valencia and Cádiz during the Caliphate of Córdoba, in the Ottoman Empire during the early modern period. Madaris were divided into lower and specialized levels, which reveals that there was a sense of elevation in school. Students who studied in the specialized schools after completing courses in the lower levels became known as danismens. While madrasa can now refer to any type of school, the term madrasa was originally used to refer more specifically to a medieval Islamic center of learning, mainly teaching Islamic law and theology, usually affiliated with a mosque, and funded by an early charitable trust known as WAQF. <laughs> law school Madaris were largely centered on the study of fiqh Islamic jurisprudence. The Ijazat al tadris wa al-ift license to teach and issue legal opinions. In the medieval Islamic legal education system had its origins in the 9th century after the formation of the Madahib schools of jurisprudence. George Makdisi considers the Ijaza to be the origin of the European doctorate. However, in an earlier article, he considered the Ijaza to be of fundamental difference to the medieval doctorate, since the former was awarded by an individual teacher-scholar not obliged to follow any formal criteria, whereas the latter was conferred on the student by the collective authority of the faculty. To obtain an ijaza, a student had to study in a guild school of law, usually four years for the basic undergraduate course, 
and ten or more years for a postgraduate course. The doctorate was obtained after an oral examination to determine the originality of the candidate's thesis and to test the students' ability to defend them against all objections, in disputations set up for the purpose. These were scholarly exercises practiced throughout the students' career as a graduate student of law. After students completed their postgraduate education, they were awarded ijazas giving them the status of faqih scholar of jurisprudence, mufti scholar competent in issuing fatwas, and mudaris teacher. The Arabic term ijazat al-tadris was awarded to Islamic scholars who were qualified to teach. According to MACDC, the Latin title licentia docendi license to teach in the European University may have been a translation of the Arabic, but the underlying concept was very different. A significant difference between the ijazat al-tadris and the licentia docendi was that the former was awarded by the individual scholar-teacher, while the latter was awarded by the chief official of the university, who represented the collective faculty, rather than the individual scholar-teacher. Much of the study in the madrasa college centered on examining whether certain opinions of law were orthodox. This scholarly process of determining orthodoxy began with a question which the Muslim layman, called in that capacity Mustafti, presented to a juris consult, called Mufti, soliciting from him a response, called Fatwa, a legal opinion the religious law of Islam covers civil as well as religious matters. The Mufti professor of legal opinions, took this question, studied it, researched it intensively in the sacred scriptures, in order to find a solution to it. This process of scholarly research was called ijihad, literally, the exertion of one's efforts to the utmost limit. <inaudible> <inaudible> Medical school Though Islamic medicine was most often taught at the Bamaristan teaching hospitals, there were also several medical madaris dedicated to the teaching of medicine. For example, of the 155 madrasa colleges in 15th century Damascus, three of them were medical schools. Toby Huff argues that no medical degrees were granted to students, as there was no faculty that could issue them, and that, therefore, no system of examination and certification developed in the Islamic tradition like that of medieval Europe. However, the historians Andrew C. Miller, Nigel J. Shanks and Dash al khalai point out that, during this era, physician licensure became mandatory in the Abbasid Caliphate. In 931 AD, Caliph al-Muqtadr learned of the death of one of his subjects as a result of a physician's error. He immediately ordered his Matasib Sinan ibn Thabit to examine and prevent doctors from practicing until they passed an examination. From this time on, licensing exams were required and only qualified physicians were allowed to practice medicine. In the early modern period in the Ottoman Empire, Suleiman I added new curriculums to the Ottoman medrases, of which one was medicine, which alongside studying of the hadith was given highest rank. <inaudible> <inaudible> Madrasa and university Note, the word Jamie Ah Arabic, Jamth simply means university. For more information, see Islamic University disambiguation. .Scholars like Arnold H. Green and Saeed Hossein Nasser have argued that, starting in the 10th century, some medieval Islamic madaris indeed became universities. However, scholars like George Magdisi, Toby Huff and Norman Daniel argue that the European medieval university has no parallel in the medieval Islamic world. Darlene Prides questions this view, pointing out that Madaris and European universities in the Mediterranean region shared similar foundations by princely patrons and were intended to provide loyal administrators to further the ruler's agenda. A number of scholars regard the university as uniquely European in origin and characteristics. According to Encyclopædia Britannica, however, the earliest universities were founded in Asia and Africa, predating the first European medieval universities, al karawiyyin University in Fez. Morocco is recognized by many historians as the oldest degree granting university in the world, having been founded in 859 by Fatima al Firi. While the Madrasa College could also issue degrees at all levels, the Jamie Oz such as al and al Azhar University differed in the sense that they were larger institutions, more universal in terms of their complete source of studies, had individual faculties for different subjects, and could house a number of mosques, madaris, and other institutions within them. Such an institution has thus been described as an Islamic university, 
Al Azhar University, founded in Cairo, Egypt in 975 by the Ismaili Shishfatimid dynasty as a Jami ah, had individual faculties for a theological seminary, Islamic law and jurisprudence, Arabic grammar, Islamic astronomy, early Islamic philosophy, and logic in Islamic philosophy. The postgraduate doctorate in law was only obtained after an oral examination to determine the originality of the candidate's theses and to test the students ability to defend them against all objections, in disputations set up for the purpose." Abd al-Latif al-Baghdadi also delivered lectures on Islamic medicine at al-Azhar, while Maimonides delivered lectures on medicine and astronomy there during the time of Saladin. Another early Jami ah was the Nizamiya of Baghdad founded 1091, which has been called the "...largest university of the medieval world." Mustansariya University, established by the Abbasid Caliph al Mustansir in 1233, in addition to teaching the religious subjects, offered courses dealing with philosophy, mathematics, and the natural sciences. However, the classification of madaris as universities is disputed on the question of understanding of each institution on its own terms. In madaris, the ijazas were only issued in one field, the Islamic religious law of Shar ah, and in no other field of learning. Other academic subjects, including the natural sciences, philosophy and literary studies, were only treated ancillary to the study of the sharia. For example, a natural science like astronomy was only studied if at all, to supply religious needs, like the time for prayer. This is why Ptolemaic astronomy was considered adequate, and is still taught in some modern-day madaris. The Islamic law undergraduate degree from Al-Azhar, the most prestigious madrasa, was traditionally granted without final examinations, but on the basis of the student's attentive attendance to courses. In contrast to the medieval doctorate which was granted by the collective authority of the faculty, the Islamic degree was not granted by the teacher to the pupil based on any formal criteria, but remained a personal matter, the sole prerogative of the person bestowing it, no one could force him to give one. Medievalist specialists who define the university as a legally autonomous corporation disagree with the term university for the Islamic madaris and jamias because the medieval university from Latin universitas was structurally different, being a legally autonomous corporation rather than a waqf institution like the madrasa and jami ah. Despite the many similarities, medieval specialists have coined the term Islamic college. For Madrasa and Jami Ah to differentiate them from the legally autonomous corporations that the medieval European universities were. In a sense, the Madrasa resembles a university college in that it has most of the features of a university, but lacks the corporate element. Toby Huff summarizes the difference as follows From a structural and legal point of view, the Madrasa and the university were contrasting types. Whereas the madrasa was a pious endowment under the law of religious and charitable foundations (WAQF), the universities of Europe were legally autonomous corporate entities that had many legal rights and privileges. These included the capacity to make their own internal rules and regulations, the right to buy and sell property, to have legal representation in various forums, to make contracts, to sue and be sued. Quote, as Muslim institutions of higher learning, the madrasa had the legal designation of waqf. In central and eastern Islamic lands, the view that the madrasa, as a charitable endowment, will remain under the control of the donor and their descendant, resulted in a spurt of establishment of madaris in the 11th and 12th centuries. However, in Western Islamic lands, where the Maliki views prohibited donors from controlling their endowment, madaris were not as popular. Unlike the corporate designation of Western institutions of higher learning, the WAQF designation seemed to have led to the exclusion of non-Orthodox religious subjects such as philosophy and natural science from the curricula. The Madrasa of al karawiyyan one of the two surviving madaris that predate the founding of the earliest medieval universities and are thus claimed to be the first universities, by some authors, has acquired official university status as late as 1947. The other, Al-Azhar, did acquire this status in name and essence only in the course of numerous reforms during the 19th and 20th century, notably the one of 1961 which introduced non-religious subjects to its curriculum, such as economics, engineering, medicine, and agriculture. 
It should also be noted that many medieval universities were run for centuries as Christian cathedral schools or monastic schools prior to their formal establishment as Universitas Scholarium. Evidence of these immediate forerunners of the university dates back to the 6th century AD, thus well preceding the earliest Madaris. George Macdesi, who has published most extensively on the topic concludes in his comparison between the two institutions, thus the university, as a form of social organization, was peculiar to medieval Europe. Later, it was exported to all parts of the world, including the Muslim East, and it has remained with us down to the present day. But back in the Middle Ages, outside of Europe, there was nothing anything quite like it anywhere. Nevertheless, Makdisi has asserted that the European university borrowed many of its features from the Islamic madrasa, including the concepts of a degree and doctorate. Makdisi and Hugh Goddard have also highlighted other terms and concepts now used in modern universities which most likely have Islamic origins, including the fact that we still talk of professors holding the chairman of their subject, being based on the traditional Islamic pattern of teaching where the professor sits on a chair and the students sit around him. The term academic circles being derived from the way in which Islamic students sat in a circle around their professor. And terms such as having fellows, reading a subject, and obtaining degrees can all be traced back to the Islamic concepts of ashab, companions, as of Muhammad, kira'ah, reading aloud the Quran, and ijaza, license to teach, respectively. Makdisi has listed 18 such parallels in terminology which can be traced back to their roots in Islamic education. Some of the practices now common in modern universities which Makdisi and Goddard trace back to an Islamic root include "...practices such as delivering inaugural lectures, wearing academic robes, obtaining doctorates by defending a thesis, and even the idea of academic freedom are also modeled on Islamic custom." The Islamic scholarly system of fatwa and IJM, meaning opinion and consensus respectively, formed the basis of the scholarly system the West has practiced in university scholarship from the Middle Ages down to the present day." According to MacDC and Goddard, "...the idea of academic freedom," in universities was also "...modeled on Islamic custom," as practiced in the medieval madrasa system from the 9th century. Islamic influence was "...certainly discernible in the foundation of the first deliberately planned university." In Europe, the University of Naples Federico II founded by Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor in 1224, however, all of these facets of medieval university life are considered by standard scholarship to be independent medieval European developments with no traceable Islamic influence. Generally, some reviewers have pointed out the strong inclination of MacDC of overstating his case by simply resting on the accumulation of close parallels but all the while failing to point to convincing channels of transmission between the Muslim and Christian world. Norman Daniel points out that the Arab equivalent of the Latin disputation, the talika, was reserved for the ruler's court, not the madrasa, and that the actual differences between Islamic fiqh and medieval European civil law were profound. The talika only reached Islamic Spain, the only likely point of transmission, after the establishment of the first medieval universities. In fact, there is no Latin translation of the Talica and, most importantly, no evidence of Latin scholars ever showing awareness of Arab influence on the Latin method of disputation, something they would have certainly found noteworthy. Rather, it was the medieval reception of the Greek organon which set the scholastic sic et non in motion. Daniel concludes that resemblances in method had more to with the two religions having common problems, to reconcile the conflicting statements of their own authorities, and to safeguard the data of revelation from the impact of Greek philosophy." Thus Christian scholasticism and similar Arab concepts should be viewed in terms of a parallel occurrence, not of the transmission of ideas from one to the other, a view shared by Hugh Kennedy. Toby Huff, in a discussion of Mokdisi's hypothesis, argues, it remains the case that no equivalent of the bachelor's degree, the licentia docendi, or higher degrees ever emerged in the medieval or early modern Islamic madrasas. George Saliba criticized Huff's views regarding the legal autonomy of European universities and limited curriculum of madrasas, demonstrating that there were many madrasas dedicated to the teaching of non-religious subjects and arguing that madrasas generally had greater legal autonomy than medieval European universities. According to Saliba, madrasas 
were fully protected from interference in their curriculum by the very endowments that established them in the first place. Examples include the Dakwariya Madrasa in Damascus, which was dedicated to medicine, a subject also taught at Islamic hospitals, the madrasa established by Kamal al-Din ibn Man a d. 1242 in Mosul which taught astronomy, music, and the Old the New Testaments, Ula Beg's Madrasa in Samarkand which taught astronomy, and Shi'i Madrasas in Iran which taught astronomy along with religious studies. According to Saliba, as I noted in my original article, students in the medieval Islamic world, who had the full freedom to chose their teacher and the subjects that they would study together, could not have been worse off than today's students, who are required to pursue a specific curriculum that is usually designed to promote the ideas of their elders and preserve tradition, rather than introduce them to innovative ideas that challenge received texts. Moreover, if Professor Huff had looked more carefully at the European institutions that produced science, he would have found that they were mainly academies and royal courts protected by individual potentates and not the universities that he wishes to promote. But neither universities nor courts were beyond the reach of the Inquisition, which is another point that he seems to neglect. <laughs> Female education Prior to the 12th century, women accounted for less than 1% of the world's Islamic scholars. However, al sakawi and Muhammad Akram Nadwi have since found evidence of over 8,000 female scholars since the 15th century. al sakawi devotes an entire volume of his 12-volume biographical dictionary al da al-Lami to female scholars, giving information on 1,075 of them. More recently, the scholar Muhammad Akram Nadwi, currently a researcher from the Oxford Centre for Islamic Studies, has written 40 volumes on the Muhadithat, the women scholars of Hadith, and found at least 8,000 of them. From around 750, during the Abbasid Caliphate, women became renowned for their brains as well as their beauty. In particular, many well known women of the time were trained from childhood in music, dancing, and poetry. Mabuba was one of these. Another feminine figure to be remembered for her achievements was Tawadid, a slave girl who was said to have been bought at great cost by Harun al-Rashid because she had passed her examinations by the most eminent scholars in astronomy, medicine, law, philosophy, music, history, Arabic grammar, literature, theology and chess. Moreover, among the most prominent feminine figures was Shudda who was known as the scholar or the pride of women during the 12th century in Baghdad. Despite the recognition of women's aptitudes during the Abbasid dynasty, all these came to an end in Iraq with the sack of Baghdad in 1258. Women played an important role in the foundations of many Islamic educational institutions, such as Fatima al-Firi's founding of the University of al karawin in 859. This continued through to the Ayyubid dynasty in the 12th and 13th centuries, when 160 mosques and madaris were established in Damascus, 26 of which were funded by women through the WAQF charitable trust system. Half of all the royal patrons for these institutions were also women. According to the Sunni scholar Ibn Asakir in the 12th century, there were opportunities for female education in the medieval Islamic world, writing that women could study, earn ijazas, academic degrees, and qualify as scholars and teachers. This was especially the case for learned and scholarly families, who wanted to ensure the highest possible education for both their sons and daughters. Ibn Asakir had himself studied under 80 different female teachers in his time. Female education in the Islamic world was inspired by Muhammad's wives, such as Khadija, a successful businesswoman, and Aisha, a strong leader and interpreter of the Prophet's actions. According to a hadith attributed both to Muhammad and Aisha, the women of Medina were praiseworthy because of their desire for religious knowledge. How splendid were the women of the Ansar, shame did not prevent them from becoming learned in the faith. While it was not common for women to enroll as students in formal classes, it was common for women to attend informal lectures and study sessions at mosques, madaris and other public places. While there were no legal restrictions on female education, some men did not approve of this practice, such as Muhammad ibn al-Hajj who was appalled at the behavior of some women who informally audited lectures in his time. Consider what some women do when people gather with a sheikh to hear the recitation of books. At that point women come, too, to hear the readings, the men sit in one place, the women facing them. 
It even happens at such times that some of the women are carried away by the situation, one will stand up, and sit down, and shout in a loud voice. Moreover, her AWRA will appear, in her house, their exposure would be forbidden—how can it be allowed in a mosque, in the presence of men? The term aura is often translated as that which is indecent, which usually meant the exposure of anything other than a woman's face and hands, although scholarly interpretations of the aura and hijab have always tended to vary, with some more or less strict than others. <laughs> Madaris by region Madaris in the Ottoman Empire The first Ottoman medris was created in Iznik in 1331 and most Ottoman medrases followed the traditions of Sunni Islam. When an Ottoman sultan established a new medris, he would invite scholars from the Islamic world, for example, Murad II brought scholars from Persia, such as Al al Din and Fakir al Din, who helped enhance the reputation of the Ottoman medris. This reveals that the Islamic world was interconnected in the early modern period as they traveled around to other Islamic states exchanging knowledge. This sense that the Ottoman Empire was becoming modernized through globalization is also recognized by Hamada, who says. Change in the 18th century as the beginning of a long and unilinear march toward westernization reflects the two centuries of reformation in sovereign identity. Analchik also mentions that while scholars from, for example, Persia traveled to the Ottomans in order to share their knowledge, Ottomans traveled as well to receive education from scholars of these Islamic lands, such as Egypt, Persia, and Turkestan. Hence, this reveals that similar to today's modern world, individuals from the early modern society traveled abroad to receive education and share knowledge and that the world was more interconnected than it seems. Also, it reveals how the system of schooling was also similar to today's modern world where students travel abroad to different countries for studies. Examples of Ottoman madaris are the ones built by Mehmed the Conqueror. He built eight madaris that were built on either side of the mosque where there were eight higher madaris for specialized studies and eight lower madrasas, which prepared students for these." The fact that they were built around, or near mosques reveals the religious impulses behind madrasa building and it reveals the interconnectedness between institutions of learning and religion. The students who completed their education in the lower madrasas became known as danismans. This reveals that similar to the education system today, the Ottomans' educational system involved different kinds of schools attached to different kinds of levels. For example, there were lower madaris and specialized ones, and for one to get into the specialized area meant that he had to complete the classes in the lower one in order to adequately prepare himself for higher learning. This is the rank of madaris in the Ottoman Empire from the highest ranking to the lowest, from Analchik, 167. Semnie Darulhadis Madaris built by earlier sultans in Bursa. Madaris endowed by great men of state, although Ottoman Madaris had a number of different branches of study, such as calligraphic sciences, oral sciences, and intellectual sciences, they primarily served the function of an Islamic center for spiritual learning. The goal of all knowledge and in particular, of the spiritual sciences is knowledge of God. Religion, for the most part, determines the significance and importance of each science. As Analchik mentions, "...those which aid religion are good and sciences like astrology are bad." However, even though mathematics, or studies in logic were part of the madrasa's curriculum, they were all centered around religion. Even mathematics had a religious impulse behind its teachings. The ulema of the Ottoman madrasas held the view that hostility to logic and mathematics was futile since these accustomed the mind to correct thinking and thus helped to reveal divine truths. Key word being divine. Analchik also mentions that even philosophy was only allowed to be studied so that it helped to confirm the doctrines of Islam. Hence, madaris, schools were basically religious centers for religious teachings and learning in the Ottoman world. Although scholars such as Goffman have argued that the Ottomans were highly tolerant and lived in a pluralistic society, it seems that schools that were the main centers for learning were in fact heftily religious and were not religiously pluralistic, but centered around Islam. Similarly, in Europe, 
Jewish children learned the Hebrew letters and texts of basic prayers at home, and then attended a school organized by the synagogue to study the Torah. Wiesner Hanks also says that Protestants also wanted to teach proper religious values. This shows that in the early modern period, Ottomans and Europeans were similar in their ideas about how schools should be managed and what they should be primarily focused on. Thus, Ottoman madaris were very similar to present-day schools in the sense that they offered a wide range of studies, however, these studies, in their ultimate objective, aimed to further solidify and consolidate Islamic practices and theories. Curricula <inaudible> 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 As is previously mentioned, religion dominated much of the knowledge and teachings that were endowed upon students. Religious learning is the only true science, whose sole aim was the understanding of God's Word. Thus, it is important to keep this impulse in mind when going over the curriculum that was taught. The following is taken from Analchik. A calligraphic sciences such as styles of writing. B. Oral sciences such as Arabic language, grammar and syntax. c. Intellectual sciences — logic in Islamic philosophy. d. Spiritual sciences — theoretical, such as Islamic theology and mathematics, and practical, such as Islamic ethics and politics. <laughs> Social life and the medris As with any other country during the early modern period, such as Italy and Spain in Europe, the Ottoman social life was interconnected with the medris. Medrases were built in as part of a mosque complex where many programs, such as aid to the poor through soup kitchens, were held under the infrastructure of a mosque, which reveals the interconnectedness of religion and social life during this period. The mosques to which medrases were attached, dominated the social life in Ottoman cities. Social life was not dominated by religion only in the Muslim world of the Ottoman Empire, it was also quite similar to the social life of Europe during this period. As Goffman says, "...just as mosques dominated social life for the Ottomans, churches and synagogues dominated life for the Christians and Jews as well." Hence, social life and the medris were closely linked, since medrases taught many curricula, such as religion, which highly governed social life in terms of establishing orthodoxy. They tried moving their developing state toward Islamic orthodoxy. Overall, the fact that mosques contained medrases comes to show the relevance of education to religion in the sense that education took place within the framework of religion and religion established social life by trying to create a common religious orthodoxy. Hence, medrases were simply part of the social life of society as students came to learn the fundamentals of their societal values and beliefs. Madaris in South Asia Bangladesh There are three different madrasa education systems in Bangladesh, the original Dars Nizami system, the redesigned Nizami system, and the higher syllabus Aliya Nisab. The first two categories are commonly called Kami or non-government madaris. Amongst them the most notable are Al-Jamiatul Aliya Darul Ulam Moinul Islam in Hathazari, Al-Jamiya Al-Islamiya Patiya, in Patiya, and Jamiya Tawakuliya Ranga Madrasa in Silhet. In 2006 there were 15,000 registered Kami Madaris with the Bifakal Mudaresan of Bangladesh Kami Madrasa Education Board, though the figure could be well over double that number if unregistered Madaris were counted. India In India the majority of these schools follow the Hanafi school of thought. The religious establishment forms part of the mainly two large divisions within the country, namely the Diobandis, who dominate in numbers of whom the Darul Uloom Dioband constitutes one of the biggest madaris and the Barelvis, who also make up a sizable portion Sufi -oriented. Some notable establishments include, al Jamiatul Ashrafiya, Mubarakpur, Manzur Islam Bairaili, Jamia Nizamadina New Delhi, Jamia Naimiya Muradabad which is one of the largest learning centres for the Barelvis. The HR Ministry of the Government of India has recently declared that a central madrasa board would be set up. This will enhance the education system of madras in India. 
Though the Madaris impart Quranic education mainly, efforts are on to include mathematics, computers and science in the curriculum. In July 2015, the state government of Maharashtra created a stir de recognized madrasa education, receiving kritishic from several political parties with the NCP accusing the ruling BJP of creating Hindu-Muslim friction in the state, and Kamal Faruqui of the All India Muslim Personal Law Board saying it was ill-designed. Expansion after the British occupation of India and the emergence of Darul Ulam Manazar e Islam Bareilly Sharif, Indian Muslim scholars left India to establish Madaris in other regions of the world. Some of the most notable of these Madaris are Darul Ulam Halakam, which produced scholars such as Sheikh Ibrahim Memon Madani, or Darul Uloom al Madaniya. These offshoot schools symbolize an emotional drive based upon both religion and patriotism that is not evident elsewhere. Madaris and Arabic colleges in Kerala The Arabic and Islamic educational system has also become a channel for employment in the Middle East in modern times in Kerala. Originating in 8th century Madaris for primary children, Arabic and Islamic schooling in Kerala was patronised and funded by the British colonial government. Today, the system of Arabic and Islamic education has grown and further integrated with Kerala government administration. In 2005, an estimated 6,000 Muslim Arabic teachers taught in Kerala government schools, with over 500,000 Muslim students. State-appointed committees, not private mosques or religious scholars outside the government, determine the curriculum and accreditation of new schools and colleges. Primary education in Arabic and Islamic studies is available to Kerala Muslims almost entirely in after-school madrasa programs, sharply unlike full-time madaris common in North India, which may replace formal schooling. Arabic colleges over 11 of which exist within the state-run University of Calicut and the Kanner University provide BA and master's level degrees. At all levels, instruction is coeducational, with many women instructors and professors. Islamic education boards are independently run by the following organizations, accredited by the Kerala state government, Samastha Kerala Islamic Education Board, Kerala Nadvathal Mujahideen, Jamaat-e-Islami Hind, and Jamiat alema e hind with Malayam rather than Urdu as the lingua franca of Kerala Muslims. These madaris and colleges are relatively unknown and unlinked from Urdu-based madaris in the rest of India, due to the linguistic barrier. Pakistan The Madaris rose as colleges of learning in the Islamic world in the 11th century, though there were institutions of learning earlier. They catered not only to the religious establishment, though that was the dominant influence over them, but also the secular one. To the latter they supplied physicians, administrative officials, judges and teachers. Even to this day many registered madaris are working effectively and coping up with modern education systems such as Jamia Tul Medina which is a chain of Islamic schools in Pakistan and in European and other countries established by Dawat-e-Islami. The Jamia Tul Medina are also known as Faisan e Medina. Dawat-e-Islami has grown its network of madaris from Pakistan to Europe. Madaris in Southeast Asia In Southeast Asia, Muslim students have a choice of attending a secular government or an Islamic school. Madaris or Islamic schools are known as Sekola Agama Malay, religious school in Malaysia and Indonesia, Rongrayan Sasna Zislam Thai, school of Islam in Thailand and Madaris in the Philippines. In countries where Islam is not the majority or state religion, Islamic schools are found in regions such as southern Thailand near the Thai-Malaysian border and the southern Philippines in Mindanao, where a significant Muslim population can be found. Topic: Indonesia. Topic: Singapore. In Singapore, madrasas are private schools which are overseen by Majlis Ugama Islam Singapura MUIS, Islamic Religious Council of Singapore. There are six madrasas in Singapore, catering to students from primary 1 to secondary 4 and junior college equivalent, or pre-U, at several schools. Four madrasas are coeducational and two are for girls. 
Students take a range of Islamic studies subjects in addition to mainstream MO curriculum subjects and sit for the PSLE and GCE o levels like their peers. In 2009, MUIS introduced the Joint Madrasa System. JMS, a joint collaboration of Madrasa al Ursayyad al Islamiyah Primary School and Secondary Schools Madrasa al Junid al Islamiyah, offering the Ukrawi, or religious stream, and Madrasa al Arabia al Islamiyah, offering the academic stream. The JMS aims to introduce the International Baccalaureate program into the Madrasa al Arabia al Islamiyah by 2019. Students attending a madrasa are required to wear the traditional Malay attire, including the songkok for boys and tuting for girls, in contrast to mainstream government schools which ban religious headgear as Singapore is officially a secular state. For students who wish to attend a mainstream school, they may opt to take classes on weekends at the madrasa instead of enrolling full-time. Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> In 2004, Madaris were mainstreamed in 16 regions nationwide, primarily in Muslim-majority areas in Mindanao under the auspices of the Department of Education DEPT. The DEPT adopted Department Order No. 51, which instituted Arabic language and Islamic values instruction for Muslim children in state schools, and authorized implementation of the Standard Madrasa Curriculum SMC in private-run Madaris. While there are state-recognized Islamic schools, such as Ibn Siena Integrated School in the Islamic city of Marawi, Sarang Bangun LC in Zamboanga and SMI in Jolo, their Islamic studies programs initially varied in application and content. Since 2005, the OSAID-funded DEPT Project Basic Education Assistance for Mindanao BEAM has assisted a group of private madaris seeking a permit to operate from the government and implement the SMC. These private madaris are scattered throughout regions 11, 12 and the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Topic: <inaudible> Madaris in Muslim minority countries. Topic: <inaudible> 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 South Africa. In South Africa, the madaris also play a social and cultural role in giving after-school religious instruction to children of Muslims who attend government or private non-religious schools. However, increasing numbers of more affluent Muslims children attend fully-fledged private Islamic schools, which combine secular and religious education. Among Muslims of Indian origin, madaris also used to provide instruction in Urdu, although this is far less common today than it used to be. Topic. Canada The first madrasa established in North America, Al Rashid Islamic Institute, was established in Cornwall, Ontario in 1983 and has graduates who are Hafiz Quran and Ulama. The seminary was established by Mazar Alam under the direction of his teacher, the leading Indian Tablighi scholar Muhammad Zakariya Kanshlawi, and focuses on the Hanafi school of thought. Due to its proximity to the U.S. border city of Messina the school has historically had a high ratio of U.S. students. Their most prominent graduate Sheikh Muhammad Al-Sharif completed his HIVs in the early 1990s then went on to form the Al-Mughrib Institute. <laughs> <laughs> United States On May 26, 2012, Congressman Andre Carson of Indiana called for additional madaris in the United States. There is a madrasa in Queens, NY called Shia Ithna Ashari Jamaat of New York, a it would be presently, the Darul Uloom in New York City, an affiliate of Darul Uloom Haqqaniya in Pakistan, also serves as a madrasa. <laughs> Misuse of the word Western commentators post 9-11 often perceive Madaris as places of radical revivalism with a connotation of anti-Americanism and radical extremism, frequently associated in the Western press with Wahhabi attitudes toward non-Muslims. In Arabic the word madrasa simply means school and does not imply a political or religious affiliation, radical or otherwise. Madaris have varied curricula, and are not all religious. Some madaris in India, for example, have a secularized identity. Although early madaris were founded primarily to gain knowledge of God, 
They also taught subjects such as mathematics and poetry. For example, in the Ottoman Empire, "...madrasas had seven categories of sciences that were taught, such as, styles of writing, oral sciences like the Arabic language, grammar, rhetoric, and history and intellectual sciences, such as logic." This is similar to the Western world, in which universities began as institutions of the Catholic Church. The Yale Center for the Study of Globalization examined bias in United States newspaper coverage of Pakistan since the September 11, 2001 attacks, and found the term has come to contain a loaded political meaning. When articles mention, "...madrasas," readers were led to infer that all schools so named are anti-American, anti-Western, pro-terrorist centers having less to do with teaching basic literacy and more to do with political indoctrination. Various American public figures have, in recent times, used the word in a negative context, including Newt Gingrich, Donald Rumsfeld, and Colin Powell. The New York Times published in January 2007 a correction for misusing the word madrasa in a way that assumed it meant a radical Islamic school. The correction stated an article about a pointed exchange over a website report that said Senator Barack Obama had attended an Islamic school or madrasa in Indonesia as a child referred imprecisely to madrasas. While some madrasas teach a radical version of Islam, most historically have not. <laughs> See also